Hey there, this is Mr. Icarus, and welcome to yet another edition of Doom Mod Madness. This time around, we're checking out something that's more map than mod, but still pretty nifty all the same. This is Order of the Odonata. Now, some of you may be wondering what Odonata actually means. Well, it's a term that describes an order of carnivorous insects, including the dragonfly, which... Shock horror turns out to be the name of the author of this particular map. I see what you did there, Dragonfly. I see what you did there. I had to look it up on Wikipedia, but I see what you did there. But as for the map itself, as you can see, it's pretty bloody nice looking. It's got intelligent use of textures forming its castle theme, and it also takes advantage of more GZ Doom specific features such as importing 3D models for the tree that adorns the middle of the courtyard here, and even the fluttering banners that you may occasionally see hanging off the walls higher up. Not that you'll get much chance to appreciate most of this stuff, because this is a map that really does launch you straight into the action. As for the enemies you'll be up against, it's the usual rogues gallery of enemies you know and love, what with a few cosmetic changes to some of them, specifically the Mancubus, the Arachnotron, and the Revenant, all in an effort, I assume, to just make them fit in a little bit more visually with the surroundings, which they most certainly do, it's a good fit. As for the layout of the level itself, it's actually kind of neat. It's non-linear in design and revolves around the collection of three skull cards, red, yellow, and blue. You're not penalized for picking any particular skull key to go after first, and of course, in pursuit of these keys, you're going to be dropped into several reasonably challenging encounters. I was a fan of this one here in this rather lovely design chapel-style environment, and I was also impressed by the fake-out at the end where it was oh you think you're done you think you can leave now just because you killed everything that's in the room well guess what it's not over the floor is now blood also say hello to mr archvile the friendliest of all demons he just wants to give you more friends to play with damn it I will say that this map has potentially given me a phobia of curved staircases because right at the top of this, there is a revenant. And if you're not quick enough, which most of the time you won't be with this weapon, it'll fire off a homing projectile and you will just be going, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, till you get out of the way of the thing at the very bottom because it can follow the curve precisely. It's the kind of thing where I'd love to discover whether it was an intentional placement or something discovered as part of a happy accident, because either way it results in a wonderfully fun little bit of panic having you fight all the way up that staircase, only to have to run all the way back down again if you want to avoid an explosive to the face. Interestingly though, you'll only get to experience that if you play this on ultra violence difficulty, and sometimes, honestly, I shy away from doing a first pass of a map on ultra violence, but it's a habit that I've been trying to shake, and situations like that have certainly given me a bit more incentive to do so. And speaking of the difficulty, I'd honestly say that this could stand to be more difficult. As it currently stands, ultra violence feels more in line with what I usually expect from Hurt Me Plenty and I've been trying to put my finger on why that feels that way, and I'd probably say it's down to an overabundance of medkits and armor. Despite this, however, I wouldn't describe this map as a pushover. Far from it, there's certain moments here that will initially seem overwhelming, just in terms of the numbers and types of enemy that you'll be encountering. But then you'll discover that the layout of this is such that it actually affords you a high degree of freedom in terms of movement, in terms of angle of attack. It's an aspect of this map that just comes together really nicely and even results in a nice state of flow for certain encounters where you just feel like you're effortlessly going from one enemy to the next. It's this effortlessness that in my eyes defines this map, not just in the combat but also in the level design. Despite its non-linear nature, it doesn't feel disjointed, everything feels extremely well integrated, and I just love the way that these areas all flow back into the core of the map and essentially ensure that you never really ever feel lost, it's always pointing you back in the direction that you need to go. Now when you eventually get around to collecting all of the skull keys in this map, it doesn't mean that the map is done showing you a good time, because after you activate these switches, you're going to see something impressive. And no, I'm not just talking about this portal, because hot damn is that impressive, but this. 
This is something that stunned me into reverent silence when I first witnessed it. Because from nothing to this, honestly rising out of the ground with the little cherry on top of the banners unfurling at the back there. Oh, it's just decadence. It is outright filthy decadence and I love it. It's just a shame that it's all in service of this particular boss enemy. I mean, there's nothing expressly wrong with it. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying this is a bad boss battle. In fact, it's pretty goddamn good. It's just that after all of that grandness, you, uh, you, you get primed for something equally as grand to either come through the portal or descend from the heavens, suspended on a beam of light, that kind of stuff. But yeah, this, this works. This works okay. And the nice thing about this boss battle is that at a certain point, it does cause the environment to shift once again. As you see here, we've got a few things rising out to the ground, and what do you know? The floor is now lava. I, I love that kind of stuff. Always puts a smile on my face, but the, the genesis of this area, just experiencing it, is definitely going to be one of the more memorable things for me this year, by far. So this is usually the part of the video where I try to sum it all up and tell you whether I think you should give it a whirl for yourself, and I'm pretty sure you already know the answer to that, so all I'm going to say is, if you're interested, the link is in the description below. While I'm at it, I'd like to give a great big thank you to my wonderful patrons over on Patreon. Thank you so very much for supporting the channel and for helping to make content like this possible. If you're interested in lending a hand yourself, maybe you'd like to see your name in the credits, or maybe you'd like to gain access to early editions of my videos before everyone else. In that case, you can find the link to my Patreon page also in the description below. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video, feel free to let me know what you thought in the comments, and feel free to suggest any mods you'd like to see me cover in future episodes of Doom Mod Madness. This has been Mr. Icarus, thank you very much for watching, Icarus out.